Welcome to the fifth edition of the Golden Key Awards. MRSI is thrilled to be back in Delhi. I think it's only this city we have to be back, recognizing the sheer talent and the power this Delhi contributes to the whole industry. Um, in the spirit of always getting better, we heard last time that the speeches were too detailed. So the brief given to me is short and short. So I will keep it short unless, of course, you want me to go into more details, I can do that. But on a, on a serious note, I think there was a time and place for more detailed sort of updates that MRSI does, because I have in the past asked, and I think many people have asked me, what does MRSI exactly do? And in the spirit of accountability, as well as to raise really the level of awareness, uh, the speeches were detailed, to bring to you the vast scope that happens behind the scenes. So I hope that objective has been well met, otherwise I do have the details. See, if you remember, I'm sure all of us know uh, the three pillars that MRSI really has been focused on. We've been singularly looking at these three streams uh, and expanding our footprint across building networks, building currency, and building pride. Sorry. Let me get on with the first one, which is building networks. I think the starting point was the industry sizing report to assess and recognize the different constituents that form the uh, industry really, fully including analytics and the role it's playing from India on the global map actually put us as the third largest uh, market of market research in the world. Last year, we focused on building connects with the government as the goals of our industry and the government are actually fully in sync. We built an opportunity to be part of a 14 service sector focus and over time will be able to participate in export fairs both overseas and in India. This year, our focus will be on the CEO cohort and to bring to the forefront the value that we have as an industry uh, to its final users. This is work in progress, and you will hear more about it in the course of the year. Building currency, MRSI last year had launched the revamp code of conduct, which is fully aligned to ESOMAR, which governs all the members. The key premise is, of course, to keep it relevant, to keep it updated, to protect the sanctity of shared data, and really to make sure that we are at the forefront of being inclusive in our approach and reach. More recently, we've been working hard to relaunch a better system of consumer classification. The industry has been facing issues for a while in finding the right respondent and having a distribution which is just not intuitive but really can be forecasted upon. We stress tested this method and to make sure it stands true for today and even for the next few years. We then took it to the agency heads and who endorsed it and then took it to the ISA where we got a unanimous sign off. I'm really pleased to say that we relaunched this currency today and a few hours ago had a very fruitful panel discussion and a press conference um, and really making it the way we go uh, classify consumers who are more representative of the current India. And the pillar that's really, really most important and that's why we are here today, uh, I think the key motivator for all of us is to fight the right insight with the right people and in the best way. For this, we are always innovative, we are always curious, and we are cutting edge not just in the way that we implement our research, but also how we embed them. MRSI provides the platform of the seminar uh, where great thinking gets shared and the bar gets lifted for the whole industry. I must say we are very generous in our learning, in sharing our learnings and excited to be part of the seminar. And, and you can see the, the real uh, you know, width of the participation here. And in fact, we had 570 people in the last seminar and unfortunately had to uh, decline 100 people who were quite keen. And today, I think, is the culmination of all our work. It's the hero of all days, the celebration of our work. It's been, like our host said, it's been five years since we started. And like everything else, we keep learning, we keep getting better. Last year, we added two awards to include our foundation, which is the operations, of course, and gave emerging sectors a special lens. This year, we, looked, we didn't add any awards, but we made the criteria more detailed, the process a lot more stringent, the hours sharper, and had an astounding response. Everyone who made it to the finalists was really on top of the game. 
just to get into the process a little bit, for all the 14 awards, we had discrete jury panels. It was not a one-way street. The effort was not to eliminate, but rather to build on what the uh, entries were and give each one a best chance. So the jury went through all of them, uh, the, all the submission shared gaps that they wanted to see addressed in the presentations. These were then rated individually and collated, and then later on ratified by the awards committee chaired by Subhanshu Raut. Many, and I just want to point out, many who did not make it to the finalists were maybe a little ahead of time where the full impact had yet not been you know, seen. And I really urge uh, those entries to resubmit with, with more impact uh, substantiation next time. And, and another point to look at when we're looking at our submissions is making sure that the impact is linked to the specific research that has been done, because finally it is the market research industry that is doing it. But thank you all for the wide participation. And I'm really, really sure that we are very keen to get on to who the winners are. But before I hand it back to our MCs, I recently came across a fact that the highest performing teams have two things in common. One is quite first and foremost, they have a strong purpose. You know, they have, they have a spark that has been ignited and it's quite visible in the way they take pride in the industry and in their work and their everyday lives. This often starts from an inspiration from within or from outside. And I'm really pleased to announce that we have Lieutenant General Huda, who through his experience... I'd like to invite him on stage. The next slide. Yana. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, who literally gained from the trenches, will share key learnings that we can all take inspiration from. And the second fact that really is common to high-performing teams is the fact that teams that laugh together stay together. It builds trust and also gives a forum where you can let go a little bit and let loose. I think Shobha has been sort of a signature uh, uh, in the last few events, and she's back with us with a new chapter, which we're very keen to go through. And I think this, uh, just before I sign off, the inspiration is not just from outside. It's very, very much here, right in the room. On two accounts, with the Lifetime Achievement Awards, we are here to recognize the leaders who have who have, in a, in a very tangible way, shaped the industry. And we are very, very keen to hear the wisdom and, and their career journeys and take inspiration from that. But I think both the hosts also mentioned that this evening is really about the gold badges. So all of you who are wearing the gold badges who are the finalists, it's thanks to you we're all here and we are going to have such a good time. And I think I just want you to take a pause, look around, because let it seep in. Because not only has your work been of such high impact uh, that we are here, but also that you worked hard, went outside your everyday jobs, and shared it in this forum so that we can all you know, learn from it and get inspired. So a really huge round of applause for the gold badges. This is all about you. Thank you.